Hello, everyone. This is Ross Ritterman with your Metropolis of San Francisco Church Music Ministry, offering to you one of this week's videos as we seek to enrich the liturgical life of our parishes and educate our church musicians on this, the vast ocean of hymnology that is such an integral part of our musical tradition. If you've been following along, we'll be on the Atheothian on Gospel this coming Sunday, August the 3rd, and we'll continue looking at the set of hymns known as the Eothina Doxastica, which represent the musical high point of the Orthro service. As you've probably heard us say once or twice by now, these hymns were written by the Byzantine Emperor Leo VI, called the Wise, who penned a poetic reflection on each of the 11 Gospel texts. Let's begin as usual by looking at the Gospel reading, which is John chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. At that time Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she looked stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Saying this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and said to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. So this is that account of the resurrection where Mary Magdalene mistakes Jesus for the gardener. And once she recognizes him, there is this well-known exchange where Jesus tells her not to touch him. So let's now look at the text of the hymn itself and see how the hymnographer approached the gospel and dealt with this encounter between Jesus and Mary, and Mary Magdalene. The fervent tears of Mary were not shed in vain, for behold, she hath been counted worthy of being instructed by angels, and of seeing thy countenance, O Jesus. Yet as a weak woman, she still minded earthly things. Therefore she was turned back that she might not touch thee, O Christ. Howbeit she was sent as a herald to thy disciples, and telling them the good tidings, she proclaimed thine ascent into thy paternal inheritance. Together with her account is also worthy of thy manifestation, O Sovereign Lord. So, one thing to note is how different this hymn is in terms of its point of view from the seventh Eothenon that we looked at last time, where it was almost as if the hymnologist was speaking directly to Mary, but here is with several of the other doxastica we have yet again a third-person perspective. It's also worth pointing out that we have a common convention, one that we frequently see in our hymns and our prayers, where we the faithful recount something that God has done for us in the course of salvation history, and we ask for something to be done likewise. We notice here how Mary Magdalene, despite her weak faith in this moment, was nonetheless counted worthy to be the first to encounter the risen Lord. So we ask that we may be counted worthy to have such an experience of Christ ourselves. All right, and now to the music. We take the score from the Divine Music Project from the St. Anthony's Monastery website, St. Anthony's Monastery in Florence, Arizona. This is a stigraric hymn in the plagal fourth mode based on knee or approximately a low C. Let's also remember that when we say a hymn is stichoraric, we usually mean that it has three or four notes per syllable. And in fact, we'll see that in this hymn there are a few times where there are actually more than that. Recall also that Plagal of the Fourth Mode uses the diatonic scale, which gives us that slightly, uh, excuse me, slightly flat <laughs> third degree, that is the note VU, and also with ZO or B in the upper tetrachord, which we also see flattened when the melody descends through or touches it on ascent, but doesn't surpass it. Let's also note the overall range of the piece, which is a kato, or lo vi, on the word things, which we have here on the fourth line at the end, and then up to ano, or high pa, on the word sent, two lines later, there in the second line on this page. Okay, great. Now let's start to break this down in some detail. In the very first line of the hymn, we are given some text painting right off the bat, where the hymnographer chose to emphasize the word tears with something that we call a crola in Byzantine music, or roughly translated a shading. And these are not exactly flores, where we have a change into a different mode, but we have this 
convention that only affects a few notes. And in this case, this croa is called a zigos. You see that specifically called out there in the Western music on the right-hand side. And it is placed on the note V or G, and it makes viga, a very close interval, ga vu, a very wide interval, vu pa, very close, and then pa ni is also very wide. So in fact, what we have is a very sharp ga and a very sharp pa in, when the zigos croa is in effect. Then on the letter Y of the word Mary, we have a diatonic niftora. So we actually use a thora to bring us out of the zigos croa. So we essentially cancel it out. And we're, then we're back into our diatonic intervals. I'll also mention that the hymnographer took this right out of the Greek Anastasia Metarion, in particular the score from the Ioannis Protopsaltis, Anastasia Metarion, published in 1905, which is the commonly used Anastasia Metarion um, by most Greek language chanters. And in fact, Papa Ephrem, who wrote the music that lives on the Divine Music Project of St. Anthony's website, uh, wrote this entire composition mostly based on that Greek score. All right. Looking at some other parts of the hymn, we see here this uh, phrase by angels in the second line. This viga, this, uh, excuse me, yeah, viga, vu, viga, vu, vu, uh, series of notes. This um, is something that comes up all the time in the Plagal Fourth Stichorarch genus, so something to just remember or, or just kind of come to expect as we go through these through these hymns. I'll just quickly chant the Thesis here, starting from the previous Martyria. Of being instructed by angels, again, a very common phrase that, that comes up all the time, so look for that to come up in other hymns like this one. A uh, couple things going on in uh, two phrases later. Yet, as a weak woman, we see these accidentals here. We see a uh, flattened vu and a sharpened ni. So we're sort of attracting the notes around pa. And this is, again, some text painting. So this idea of, of weakness, it's both the, um, the changing of the intervals as well as the... Um, the eighth and sixteenth notes that we see happening over these particular words. And then we descend completely down a perfect fifth from the from the bass note knee down to a kato or a low V on the word things. So uh, again some uh, general text painting where um, we are meant to think of things that are are lowly because that's what's being evoked in this particular part of the piece. And I'll just chant this phrase for us now. Yet as a weak woman, she still minded earthly things. And that things is that low the all right awesome another feature of plagal fourth stichorarch melodies is for the melody to move to its authentic mode or fourth mode so let's remember really quickly that the authentic modes or modes one through four tend to have been either today or in the past based on a note in the upper tetrachord of the scale and then the plagal modes were based on the lower tetrachord. So we still, to some extent, have that relationship preserved with plagal fourth mode and fourth mode, where plagal fourth is based on knee, and then we move up a fifth to um, V, which is the base note of authentic fourth mode, or agya. So we just came from this low V, and now we have an octave jump up to V, and then we have this phrase, therefore she was turned back, and the phrase goes from a high V to a high V. And on the way, it passes through high knee, or depending on how you chant it, if you do some analysis or, or um, interpretation, you might even touch paw going up there on the, on the word turned. 
But what tends to happen here in these intervals, uh, since this is a fourth mode phrase, is that we raise k and we raise zo on our way up, and then we tend to lower and put we lower the zo on our way back down to v. So just so you can hear what this sounds like. Therefore she was turned back. Notice how close the notes together were when I was chanting was, was, again, very close together. And then on turn back, turn back, we tend to draw that, that zo down, sort of indicating that we're heading back down to this bass note of the, this is the bass note of fourth mode again. And this is, you know, how this, this uh, a thesis like this tends to behave. All right, wonderful. So as I've mentioned, or as you heard um, either uh, also Chris mention in uh, previous videos, we sometimes have a situation where we violate our rule of three to four notes per syllable. And that happens on the word ascent. So we have a, an extended melismatic thesis, and this is our uh, old stichorarch quotation, uh, one of uh, two that we'll actually look at as uh, we go through this analysis. But uh, in fact, the word ascent takes on 16 notes, so quite extended, but I think quite a beautiful phrase. And just so we can hear that sung, I will go through it really quickly right now. Let's start from the previous martyria, which is that vu on, on the word she, and I'll chant all the way to the martyria of the, uh, to uh, complete the word ascent. Ooh, she proclaim thine ascent. All right, excellent. And then a few phrases later, we have together with her account is also worthy. And we have a couple things going on. We have the word worthy, which takes on 13 syllables. Again, another extraction, if we could call it such, out of the old stichoraric genus. So the previous um, kind of form of, of stichoraric hymns that was popular in the previous centuries before the new notate, before the new meth, I'm sorry, the new stichoraric uh, came about, which was roughly the uh, second half of the 18th century. And then we also have a switch to the soft chromatic scale, which lowers the K and raises the ZO relative to our diatonic scale. And I'll just chant that really quickly so you can hear. We actually go into second mode, and we then have that 13-note um, uh, segment on worthy. Together with her. I can't so You could probably hear how that K was a little lower and then the Zo was, was in its natural position or a bit higher as we hear in second mode. And then we're brought back into the diatonic scale, and actually we have an Agia phrase here on of thy manifestation. Um, and again, we go from thee to thee. Of thy manifestation. And then we return to the bass note of the piece on the ending on Sovereign Lord, this very familiar thesis. Oh, sovereign Lord. All right. So we'll begin as we normally have with our epikima, which again are sort of our phrases that we chant to signify the mode that we're in. For the plague of the fourth mode is neaye, and I will chant that according to the music you see above. We'll then chant glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and then through the hymn. Glory to the 
Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the fervent tears of Mary were not shed in vain. For behold, she hath been counted worthy of being instructed by angels and of seeing thy countenance, O Jesus. Yet as a weak woman, she still minded earthly things. Therefore she was turned back that she might not touch the old Christ. How be it she was sent as a herald to thy disciples and telling them the good tidings, she proclaimed thine ascent unto thy Wonderful. Well, thank you again for being with us for yet another installment of our video series. Please send us any feedback or suggestions on topics you would like to see us cover. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, once again, Ross Ritterman with the Metropolis of San Francisco Music Ministry. Looking forward to seeing you next time.